Hi, I'm Pastor Lance Carithers, and I want to welcome you to Woodlawn Without Walls, the online worship service from Woodlawn United Methodist Church in Derby, Kansas. We're so glad that you have joined us here today. This service is provided for those who cannot be with us to worship in person and for those who may be seeking to learn more about Woodlawn's faith community, a community of love and grace. More information, including in-person worship times, small groups, spiritual formation for adults, youth, and children can be found at our website, woodlawnumc.net. My ministry partner, Reverend Lori Patton Aguilar, is on family leave, so she's not with us today. She and her husband, John, welcomed their new son, Danny Borrego Patton Aguilar. We rejoice with them and wish them all the best as they spend together time as a family. I invite you to center now as we prepare to worship Holy God. Will you join me in this call to worship? Give thanks to God. We thank God for joy, for laughter, for abundant blessings of every kind. Give thanks to God at all times and for everything. We thank God when we can and as we can for struggles, for solitude, for fears. Give thanks to God at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank God that in Christ, our joys as well as our pain, our losses as well as our laughter, are in God's heart and hands. Come now lifting our joys and concerns and heartfelt prayers before a merciful God. If you have a prayer request or a concern that you would like to share, there's a couple of ways that you may do that. If you wish, you can post your prayer request or concern here on this video where others can see it and pray with you. 
We at the church will see your request and include it in our ongoing prayers. Or you may phone Woodlawn Church to share your request with pastors or on our daily prayer email. If you don't presently receive our daily prayer email from the church, then phone or email us and ask to be included. Let us come now before the mercy of God's grace in prayer today. Eternal God, we thank you today for your goodness. You bless us richly with goodness daily. We thank you and praise you. We know that we live in a time of considerable confusion. We ask today for your wisdom, just as Solomon asked for wisdom. We're as often as fearful as was Solomon. Different and competing interests strive for our attention and loyalty. Help us, O oh God. Help us to pray for wise and discerning spirits. Give us wisdom to know good from evil. Give us wisdom, God, so that we might learn to be accepting of all the diverse people that you have created. Give us your wisdom to be peacemakers and mediators of understanding wherever there is conflict. And, O oh God, give us wisdom to discern what is of ultimate value for our souls and give us wisdom to make wise choices. Holy Father, give us wisdom, give us discernment, give us the will to be faithful. Oh God, give us the power to love. We ask God that you would be with each one today who is in need of your healing touch, your peace, your mercy, your presence through difficult journeys. We lift the ones that we hold in our hearts now in prayer to your light and love. All these things we ask in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus as we pray that prayer that he taught to his disciples and teaches us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We are family. This is us. And according to the writer of Ephesians, we are the family of God, adopted by God as God's own children. We've been working through this little book in the New Testament, Ephesians, written to both Jewish and Gentile Christians as a plea for unity, an encouragement to live into the peace of Christ. Jesus is the one who died to put an end to all division, hostility, and separation, Ephesians teaches us. This is a plea to build one another up in love, to put things that disrupt and harm away so that we might make room for kindness, tenderheartedness, and forgiveness. And through this little journey along the way, we've also been learning lessons from the television drama, This Is Us and the Pearson Family. Now in the portion of Ephesians 5 that we will read today, we learn of the author's desire that Christians will live a life of thankfulness. As we allow ourselves to be filled with the Spirit of God, we will be moved to express that in thanksgiving. I'm going to read today from Ephesians 5, 15 to 20. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, 
but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. One of my favorite holidays is Thanksgiving. Probably because as a preacher, it's one of the few holidays that I don't work. <laughs> of course, there's the food, turkey and dressing and gravy and sweet potatoes and corn and cranberries. You know, all those things rank right at the top of some of my favorite foods. Everything about Thanksgiving. I love it. Well, everything except green bean casserole. I don't know who invented that, but that just needs to stop. <laughs> I love Thanksgiving. I love Thanksgiving because of the way family all comes in and gathers round. We, we laugh and we cook and we eat and then slumber away the afternoon in our food comas. I often preach on Thanksgiving on that Sunday before the holiday, a theme about thankfulness, not just as a once a year thing, but as an attitude of living every day. How might we express our gratitude for everything that God has done for us, everything that God continues to do in our lives every single day of the year? Well, here, Ephesians 5, 15 to 20, provides us with an opportunity to hear that calling once again, right here in the middle of the summer, in the midst of August. This brief text sums up by saying, give thanks to God the Father at all times and in everything. Hear it? At all times and in everything. What if, what if we took that literally? What if we held a Thanksgiving service right here in the middle of August, reminding us that gratitude isn't confined to the fourth Thursday in November? Of course, since the text invites it, there should be plenty of singing in our Thanksgiving and August service, right? Psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with all your hearts. Hmm? Gratitude can be found all through the hymnal and our song repertoire. It's one of the dominant themes of praise and worship music. Come, we thankful people, come, raise the song of harvest home. All is safely gathered in ere the winter storms begin. Hmm. The best Thanksgiving hymns are often related to the fall harvest, but to tell the truth, God's bountiful harvest can be celebrated right here in the dog days of summer. I mean, think about it. Gardens just now are really getting with it. We can be, we can be thankful for tomatoes and, and green beans and peppers and corn and, and an abundance of zucchini. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. But this passage from Ephesians today it isn't just about being thankful for food and bountiful harvests. Remember that at all times and in everything part of the text. It's about finding God's hand in everyday living. To be thankful, making the most, even in what Ephesians recognizes are the days that are evil. You heard that earlier in the text, right? It's often hard to argue about the brokenness of the world around us. But haranguing what we identify as societal ills is not likely going to lead us to an experience of thanksgiving or gratitude, is it? That's because the kingdom we proclaim is not yet fully here. But we can see glimpses of it. We can see glimpses of God's kingdom all around us when we begin to pay attention 
and call out what we see that is right in our world. What is reflective of God's grace. Hmm? Kingdom living is God's own adopted family. To be thankful at all times and in everything, even in the midst of evil days, or as old Dr. K told the Pearsons in that very first episode of This Is Us, turning the sourest of lemons into sweet lemonade. That first season of This Is Us contained a special Thanksgiving episode. On the way to Rebecca's parents upstate one Thanksgiving, the Pearsons' old rattletrap station wagon breaks down. They have to walk most of the day to finally get to a small town. But where do you get your car repaired on Thanksgiving Day? <laughs> the answer is you don't. So they end up in a tiny roadside motel for the night. It's a, it's a miserable end to a miserable Thanksgiving. There's no turkey, no dressing. There was no opportunity to see the Macy's parade. In fact, all they have are some hot dogs and crackers and slices of American cheese that they were able to pick up at a gas station with no way to cook them. But somehow, somehow the evening is transformed as the Pearson family begins to focus on what's right with their world, what's right with their situation, rather than what's all wrong. And it begins when their dad, Jack, breaks into the room as Pilgrim Rick, a colorful character that carries the spirit of Thanksgiving wherever he goes. He's brought with him a video that he picked out at the motel office for the night, Police Academy 3. He invites the children to sit on a blanket and they all watch the movie together and eat their Thanksgiving feast. Hot dogs roasted over the blue flames of the little furnace that heats their room, then rolled in a slice of cheese and crumbled crackers. <laughs> it was a Thanksgiving they'd never forget. In fact, from this day forward, this special Thanksgiving tradition, watching Police Academy 3 and eating Thanksgiving wieners <laughs> will be the centerpiece of every Pearson Thanksgiving gathering. Through five seasons, the writers of This Is Us have produced a special Thanksgiving episode every year. It's as if they want their audience to know there is so much for which to be thankful. Despite all the show's tragedies and family feuds and angst and this sadness of their father's death that hangs over them like a dark cloud, there is still so much gratitude, so much to be thankful for, to be thankful at all times and in everything. Linda Elliott is a writer and she wrote about a true story. Uh, it began with her meeting with a friend on the Friday after Thanksgiving for breakfast before embarking on a day of Christmas shopping. They were seated in a coffee shop when Linda noticed that it had begun to drizzle outside and she grumbled about dashing around in the rain to complete their shopping. It just ruined the whole day. And though she and her friend always vow not to get into this frenzy every holiday, it seems they always find themselves stressed to the hilt about this time of year. That's when Linda, out of the corner of her eye, notices an elderly man who is making his way carefully down the sidewalk. He's carrying an umbrella in one hand to shelter himself from the rain and balancing several brooms across his other shoulder. Who's that? Linda asks. Her friend was a local, and she knew that the man that Linda saw was Melvin. Oh, he's been walking these streets for years, the friend said. He's almost blind, and he's in his 70s. I don't know how he does it, but everybody buys brooms from him. That's when Melvin ducked through the doorway into the coffee shop. 
waiting customers smiled and made way for him. A few walked up to shake his hand. Others patted his shoulder as they moved quietly away. And, and Melvin began to make his way through the restaurant, table to table, smiling and asking, do you need a broom today? When Melvin approaches the women at their table, Linda makes a purchase from him. And she asks Melvin if he might be willing to sit for an interview later in the week. When the two met for the interview, it was in that same little coffee shop. After sitting down, Melvin took a sip of his hot coffee. Then he sat up straight and tall in his chair. And he said, you know, there's one thing I need to make very clear about this interview. I'm a Christian, he announced. I love Jesus. That's the most important thing. My mother died when I was born, and I never knew my daddy. My grandmother raised me. She, she was a wonderful person. I've been married to one lady for 45 years. Jesus has been good to me. I owe everything I am and everything I have to him. I'm a thankful man. Well, here's a man with a message, Linda thought. She grabbed her notebook. She asked Melvin about his eyesight. Oh, I was born this way, he said. I can see a little, but my wife, Dorothy, she was born totally blind. People didn't think that we would make it, but we've raised five children. My Dorothy was even the first black woman to get a music degree from the university. The Lord has always given us work. She taught music to handicapped children until she retired. And me? Well, look at me. I'm 72 and I'm still working. Enthusiastic, eager to talk, he wrapped his hands around his cup of coffee. Melvin went on and said, you know, I've, I've been happy in my life because I made up my mind that life's not about what somebody will do for you. It's all about what you can do for somebody else. I love God and I love to help people. So how do you help people? Linda asked him, thinking surely it was Melvin who needed the help. Melvin answered right away. Well, every morning I wait on the corner for my bus and I pray that God will send someone that day who needs my help. And then I watch to see who he sends. You know, even a, a smile or a kind word helps people in this rough old world. I feel like I'm successful in life because God always sends people that I can help. Linda writes that she began to feel as if the coffee shop were holy ground. Melvin had it all figured out. Here he was, calm and secure. She says that she could feel the, the peace of the Holy Spirit coming from within him, even in the midst of a busy coffee shop. She thought about how Melvin navigated the crowds and the weather every day without complaint. And then with shame, she remembered how she had complained about the opportunity to go Christmas shopping in the rain. Melvin talked about his children. He said, Dorothy and I put two of them through college. Two are dead now. And one's not as close to the Lord as she should be. But prayer... That'll make the difference. Jesus suffered for us, so why shouldn't I suffer over my child? He pulled out a handkerchief and wiped his eyes. And then he gestured over toward the brooms propped up by the door. He said, I, I don't have to worry about anything. I'm grateful for whatever God does. If I sell one broom, I'm thankful. If I sell 10 brooms, <laughs> I'm thankful. God has shown me that my family will always have everything that we need. And I always tell him, whatever you want, 
is what I want. Linda Elliott concluded her article on Melvin with these words. She writes, the strong impact of gratitude on Melvin's life and on those around him was impossible to miss. There was so much that he could have complained about. Instead, he chose the path of gratitude and service. Mm. The path of gratitude and service. As Ephesians would remind us, at all times and in everything as one family in Christ. Ephesians calls us not only to be thankful but to be a sign of God's grace in the world. To be the example that living by kingdom values is not only possible but it's preferable to the values of a broken world. And this is how we can give thanks at all times, in all places, by living our gratitude each and every day. I hope you'll be with us next Sunday. We're going to conclude the series, This Is Us, and the book of Ephesians. Next week, it's on to the sixth chapter, and that armor of God that Pastor Lori talked about back in June, we're going to revisit that passage next week. Until then, receive this blessing. Now, thank we all our God with heart and hands and voices, whose wondrous things has done, in whom the world rejoices, in all things, every day. Amen. <laughs>